Welcome back to Educator.com. Today we're going to talk about the structure of nucleic acids. As an overview of what we're going to talk about today, of course we're going to talk about nucleic acids. Um, we'll talk about what they are actually composed of, so the nitrogenous bases, the pentoses, and how they are made up of nucleotides. Um, then we'll talk individually about DNA and then RNA. So nucleic acids are biopolymers, meaning they are um, made up of monomers, so multiple units making a polymer, and they are biological molecules. And these biopolymers are essential for all known forms of life. Um, DNA and RNA are composed of nucleotides, so those are the monomer unit. Now we have deoxyribonucleic acid, and this would be DNA. Right, so the DNA. Then we have ribonucleic acid, and that is RNA. All right. Now nucleotides are composed of heterocyclic nitrogen bases, and as we're going to see later, those are A's, T's, G's, C's, and when we're going to talk about RNA, they will also have a U. Right? Now, nucleotides also have pentoses, so those are the ribose or deoxyribose. And as we can see, the ribose would be for ribonucleic acid, RNA. And the deoxyribose is for deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA. And finally, nucleotides have phosphate groups. They'll have one two, or three phosphate groups. Okay, remember we have PO4, three minus. Now, nucleic acids are found inside cells, right? And if we see a eukaryotic cell right here, right, what we can zoom in on is the nucleus, right? Now, the nucleus is what houses our chromosomes. And remember, our chromosomes are made up of DNA. And DNA is a nucleic acid. Right? Inside the nucleus, we can also find RNA, as well as in the cytoplasm, we will find RNA as well. Now, the nitrogenous bases that we talked about, remember I said A, G, T, and C. Well, those can be split into two different categories. All right, we have our purines. Right? Purines, those are our double ring heterocyclic nitrogen structures. We have adenine. Okay, adenine is our A. Then we have guanine, our G. All right, so adenine and guanine are both going to be able to be found in DNA. and they'll both be found in RNA. And the only difference, as we'll see later, is that if they're in DNA, they will be attached to a deoxyribose, and if they're in RNA, they'll be attached to a ribose. Now, our pyrimidines are our single ring heterocyclic nitrogen structures. And our uh, heterocyclic nitrogen, that just means we have a ring all right, we have a, a ring structure, a cyclic structure, that has nitrogens in the ring instead of all carbons. Okay, so that's why it's hetero, because we have nitrogen and carbon. It's cyclic, we have the conjugated bonds around, and it's the nitrogen we're talking about. So, we have cytosine is one of our pyrimidines, and that is going to be found in DNA. We have thymine, another one of our pyrimidines. That is also going to be found in DNA. Right. Now, we have uracil. Uracil is not normally found in DNA. Uracil is found in RNA. Okay. And also found in RNA is cytosine. So what we actually have here is a switch 
of thymine for uracil when we're going between DNA and RNA. Now, a good way to remember our pyrimidines, um, you can remember it however it is useful for you. What I always think of uh, when we have cytosine and thymine, they have a Y and so does pyrimidines. Or if you want to think of all of them together, if you use the one letter abbreviation, C, U, and T, so you can see cut the pie for pyrimidine. So cut the pie. Those are our three uh, pyrimidines. And then if you know your three pyrimidines, it's very easy to remember your two purines, your adenine and guanine. So as a review, let's remember that our adenine and guanine both are going to be found in DNA and both are going to be found in RNA as well. So the nucleotides that we can find in DNA are A, G, T, and C. The nucleotides that we will find in RNA are A, G, C, and U. Okay.